uh, Ben. Appreciate everybody uh, joining the Zoom here. Uh, it was great to be back out on the field again. Um, you know, first time in the shell this spring. Uh, probably got around 85, 90 total plays, which is about a half a game for both groups. Um, I think we made it out pretty healthy. Uh, I don't think there were any major injuries or anything of substance that took place there from an injury standpoint. Uh, I like the work today. Um, for the first scrimmage, I thought we got a lot of good things done. You know, these are those controlled scrimmages where we hit the different situations, and I thought there was the right kind of ebb and flow with the scrimmage where I thought both sides um, did some, some good things offensively uh, and then did some good things defensively. The one area, you know, coming out of the scrimmage that I, I share with our team is, you know, our special teams has got to be a point of emphasis. And, you know, I want to see our specialists show more consistency in the, in the punt game and, and in our field goals, um, which today, you know, I, I wasn't to our standard. So, uh, so some things to still work on. You know, we got two more opportunities in the shell again next Saturday and then the spring game on April 30th uh, to get a lot of things corrected. But it was great to see a bunch of the young players get a lot of reps and uh, really should be some good teaching from from today's scrimmage. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm. Every single lawyer at the Jack Litch Law Group was honored by best lawyers in America. In the Jack Litch Law Group was the best decision anyone in my family has ever made, other than my decision to play football at the University of Maryland. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. If you have a question, we'll start with Sam Ostry. Hey, Coach. Uh, last year, throughout the season, you would talk a lot about discipline of their team, and that's something you want to see improve. How are you seeing that play out in the spring, and how are you coaching uh, the discipline aspect uh, moving forward? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a word that we use around here a lot. Um, you know, to me, uh, the discipline piece is about not beating yourself and limiting penalties and, you know, this is really the first opportunity in, in, in the scrimmage situation, uh, though we have referees at practice each day. Um, you know, I think we're coming along just fine um, as a team. You know, we've got kind of a veteran squad uh, with a bunch of guys that are coming back that have played a lot of football for us, you know, on both sides, which I think helps. Um, but again, it's still a work in progress that we'll continue to make a point of emphasis on. We'll go to Emily Giambava. Hey, um, I was just asked about Jacob Copeland. Uh, what are you kind of hoping he adds to that room? And how are you able to kind of get him to come to Maryland, especially given all the guys you already have there? You know, as I've always said, recruiting is a relationship business. And, you know, I spent a lot of time recruiting Jacob uh, at my previous place uh, and came down to us in Florida and he chose Florida. But, you know, when you develop the relationships that we do through recruiting, uh, those relationships aren't just for, you know, the recruiting purposes, at least the way I recruit. And so I've always been a big fan of Jacob, followed his career there at Florida. Um, you know, getting him to come here, I think him, him understanding the type of system we've had, we have on our offense and how we've been able to play with the multiple receivers where they all uh, contribute to each other's success. And, you know, his, his, his history of this offense and knowing – that how we've used receivers in it and the success that receivers have from, you know, Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore here at Maryland to the Jalen Waddles and the Devontae Smiths and Jerry Judy's there at Alabama, Henry Ruggs. Uh, he's got a pretty good understanding. So I think that was the attraction for him is with the opportunity to maybe improve himself or get, create a little more value for himself as a receiver, as he takes the next step to go to the next level. And, and just to kind of follow up, uh, what do you hope the, the pass game can look like this year with Talia back, all the receivers and um, offensive line? What, what is kind of your hope there? I, mean, I would hope that we are able to, to efficiently throw the ball. But for us, it's about balance. And I talk about that all the time. It's if people are going to do things to take away the, the ability to throw the ball, we've got to be able to run it efficiently, which is something we're, we're really making a point of emphasis this spring is to to get the complimentary run game going. And, and today was the first time I saw us 
do some really good things in the run game this early and having a veteran old line back uh, should really help us. But, you know, for Leah, it's about taking that next step. The veteran receivers that have been with them for a few years now, um, you would you would imagine that we should be able to continue to improve our offensive efficiency. We'll go to Charlotte McBride. Hey there, Coach. Um, you just mentioned that um, for Lee, it's about taking that next step. And um, I know he's obviously the, the focal point of this offense. Elaborate a little bit of what you're hoping to see from him and just in these first few weeks of practices, what you've already seen in terms of improvements from him from last year. Yeah, you know, I think the big thing at the quarterback position is being able to be efficient situationally. You know, when we go back and look at, at our offense, you know, from our quality control this offseason, uh, you know, winning on third down, winning in the red area, um, limiting penalties and the turnovers are the areas that you'd like to see us make the ne- take the next step. And so, you know, for us and, and as a quarterback, you're judged by how you operate in situational football. I think anybody that has seen Leah play knows that the talent is there. And I think now you'll cons- continue to see because of the consistency of the people that he's been able to play with over the last couple of years, there's a comfort level. But if there is any point of emphasis for us, it's his efficiency on third down, being able to sustain drives and keep us on the field uh, with making the throws. And then in the red area, uh, coming away with touchdowns and instead of the field goals and limiting those turnovers that that came kind of at some inopportune times. We'll go to Ahmed Gafir. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hey, Ahmed, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Uh, I know spring ball is not the same as fall ball, but I remember in the intro, introductory uh, press conference this spring, um, you mentioned that this time of the year uh, is when you're able to start seeing the new uh, playmakers, um, you know, new guys start to emerge. And through these first nine practices, is anyone new, any any of the younger guys maybe caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, I think all those guys that just got here kind of, you know, I've, I've been really pleased with how they've managed it because this is the toughest part of the program to come into when you come into our winter workouts, our turf time phase of our uh, team, you know, that's the toughest area for these young players coming in. But I like the way that they've responded and how they've handled and adapted. You know, you you look around on the defensive side, you see guys like Caleb Wheatland and and Jay Sean Barham, both coming in and and doing some really nice things as young players. I've been really pleased with Andre Roy and Maximus McCree, uh, you know, two of the, the new guys, newcomers at the offensive line position. Uh, that allows us to continue to develop depth. And, you know, I think all those young running backs, even today, you know, seeing um, Antoine Littleton and and Roman Hemby, uh, as well as Kobe McDonald, you know, those guys have really continued to show uh, their worth to us in the run game and and did some nice things. So pleased with those guys. We'll go to Ben Dixon. (laughs) Hey, Coach, I mean, I'm, you, talk, you touched on it a little before, excuse me, about kind of Talia and the O-line and that continuity with, with them coming back. How big is that for you and your coaching staff, kind of knowing what you're going to get on that front as opposed to, you know, being unproven coming into the spring? Um, definitely something that we're excited about, you know, not having to replace a bunch of people uh, up front this year. Uh, what we've got to do is develop the depth that's going to be necessary. So, You know, having a veteran group of five, six guys that have all played a lot of football for us up front, um, that experience in our system uh, should help us be able to take that next step. Um, And then obviously with the quarterback coming back for uh, his third year and and being a a comfort level with the receivers that will be back with him, the tight end. You know, I know we lost Chig, but it's been great to see the way C.J. Dupree has kind of stepped up into that role at, uh, at the tight end position. So um, definitely plus to have a veteran group of offensive linemen. You know, I think we go about seven deep with guys that played a lot of football last year, but then also good to have that veteran quarterback presence uh, behind there. We'll go to Shane Connor. Hey, Coach. So um, so you guys, uh, so Corey Dykus, he, um, you know, he came in as a freshman. He, you know, grew, grew a lot, became a big part of this team. You know, also, I know he's got a whole passion for music. You know, what kinds of things do you have to say about Corey, just his development, and also just, you know, how he is off the field? Yeah, you know, he's been one of those guys that uh, is kind of that uh, Swiss Army knife for us. You know, he came in and was a big receiver. 
Um, we we kind of utilized him as a specialty piece in our system where we moved him to tight end to complement Chig. Um, he's back playing some receiver for us this spring because of some of the depth issues there. Uh, definitely a, a matchup issue because people have to figure out whether they want to match up and play, treat him as a tight end or treat him as a receiver. And uh, he's really kind of flourished in that role, especially last year, the way he came on late in the season. You know, as far as his off the field endeavors, really talented, talented kid. And, you know, I, I know he's got a passion for music and rap and, you know, with our new facility here and having the ability to, to have the uh, music studio downstairs, he's one of those guys that has taken advantage of some of these things and resources that we provided. And there's no doubt that, um, you know, he's been a great student athlete for us, has done really well academically. And so, you know, I have no issues with Corey in terms of what uh, he brings to the table as a football player, but is an even better person. We'll go to Wes Brown. Hey, Coach, so, so you talk about the um, importance of balance, and obviously there, there is that, um, that depth and that, you know, continuity in, in the passing game, but how does maybe, you know, having that returning offensive line and, you know, depth at the other skill positions maybe help the younger running backs when, you know, it comes to, you know, them stepping up and being able to, to take on a, a load this year? Yeah, you know, the good thing is a, a lot of these young running backs play significant time for us to know. Kobe McDonald played a lot of football for us last year. And, you know, we picked our spots with Antoine and, and Roman Hemby in that, you know, we were able to preserve a red shirt year while also playing them in the bowl game, which, as I've said before, that bowl game is like the start of the 22 season force. And both those guys play significant roles and minutes in that game against Virginia Tech. So we're looking to build on that with the young running backs. Uh, and experience we have at receiver um, kind of is the sh- one of the strengths of our offense. But, you know, these young running backs, have, uh, Brooks has done a good job of bringing those guys along. Does anyone have anything else for Coach? Yeah, I'll, I'll – uh just piggyback on on, onto that again um you you talked about how important that those bowl practices were obviously your your first couple years here you weren't able to take advantage of those but I guess looking back on it now how important was that time and is there anything in particular that that maybe you know shines at this point that maybe did not those first two years and maybe how important is it to, to keep making that the standard well I mean again we've talked about that quite a bit that you know anytime you get postseason play and you're able to extend your season it affords you the opportunity to get more practice opportunities for your young players. And as we're a team that, as I like to say, is a developmental program, meaning uh, our players are going to get better with the time they spend in our program because of how we practice and some of the things we do. And again, those 15 practices was like having an extra spring ball, which is, of which is what has allowed us to kind of, we started a little later than maybe we normally would, um, but it gave us more time to have a, a, the off-season program, the turf time program, where we could maximize getting bigger, stronger, faster. But there's no doubt uh, the standard of being able to be a part of a postseason play, those extra practices give you a chance to develop some of the really young players in your program, as we did uh, as we prepared for the Virginia Tech game with some of the young players that even though they redshirted, we were able to preserve the red shirt while also still playing them in, in a game significance like that bowl game. So uh, it's definitely a win-win. 